I am trying to build a sustainable electronics industry. The things that we have just don't last as long as they used to, but they could. Every time a new gizmo comes out, we take it apart, find out what makes it tick. We need more engineers in the world. Engineers make the world better. They're designing the systems that keep the world working. So that's why I've been involved with IEEE USA, is I want to see more kids get excited about engineering. We are working with IEEE USA to create a world where repair is normal again. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to today's IEEE USA live stream webinar and our third USPTO webinar, Patent Basics. I'm your host, Jonathan Cho. IEEE USA's goal is to create programming that is valuable, relevant, and, and of interest to you. We'll be sending a short survey to all registrants after this event and would love your feedback. We value your opinions and would appreciate it if you could take a few minutes and share your thoughts. Our presenter for today is Bobby Rushing Jr from the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Mr. Rushing is a primary examiner examining cases involving gearing, transmissions, and robot arms and uh, joints. Also serving as a special advisor to the U USPTO's Eastern Regional Outreach Office, he leverages his knowledge and experience within the innovation and ecosystem. Mr. Rushing likes to immerse himself in community service as well, actively being involved with nonprofit organizations such as Research also known as Raising Excitement for Science, Engineering, and Technology, and the National Society of Black Engineers. Everyone, please welcome Bobby Rushing, Jr. Afternoon, Bobby. Glad to have you with us. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I triple E, thank you very much for, for having me. Um, I'm glad to be here, and uh, we can get started with the presentation. Um, you can see the uh, our logo on the screen there, so uh, let's get started. Okay, again, we're going to talk about patent basics. Um, just a just a quick legalese. Um, this content is for informational purposes only and is not considered legal advice. Please consult with appropriate sources for legal authority and guidance on these matters um, if you so desire. Okay, so today's objectives, we're going to talk about, we're going to go over the contents of a patent application disclosure, um, the enablement requirement, limitations of the claims, and the importance to capture um, the invention using clear and consistent language. So utility applications is is what we are is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, there are three types of patents: uh, utility patents, which is one of which you see today, and that's the bulk of of the patents. You know, when people think of patents, this is what what people are talking about. We also have design design patents, which is, which are for the ornamental and the shape of an of an item. You can think of the front of your refrigerator, the Cart the console in your vehicle, even the front and rear ends of, of your vehicles, they all have some kind of design aspect, some type of some type of aesthetic um, that is, you know, that that the inventor or and or the the designer wants to be protected, especially the companies. Up uh, the front of your phone, um, your Apple, your Android, your Nokia phones have design patents. There are also plant patents as well. Those are for asexually um, reproduced plants. Um, and again, those are most of your your uh, designer type, um, ornamental type of uh, plants and flowers. Now with utility applications, you have two types of applications. One is a provisional application um, that is filed to preserve an earlier filing date. Now that earlier filing date um, is is one year before you have a one year time time period uh, before you can file a a uh, a co pending I'm not co pending but a um, a non provisional application that comes from that provisional so that provisional application is neither examined nor published I I as an a, as an examiner cannot search for a provisional application, but I will see it if I do get the non-provisional application. Again, it is one it has a one year time limit and it is only for utility patents, but utility patent applications. The non-provisional on the, on the other hand are, are examined you have a requirement for claims and and the written description must meet certain certain requirements. It is published 18 months from the earliest filing date unless the the, the inventors or the applicants um, request for non non-publication at filing. 
and the non-provisional can become a patent, whereas a, non, a provisional does not. So um, to start, the title of the in invention, you know, all parts of the of the patent application are are important. The title should be short and specific in describing the invention. For example, I deal with with robot arms and joints, parts of the of the robot, not the whole robot itself, but sometimes I, the title will be robot. So, so when I um, issue, uh, say, say that okay, this this set of claims um, is allowable, I will say, Mister Mister or, or Miss Inventor, you would have to change the change the title um, to to something that is a quick description of your of, of the invention. You will want to avoid generic language such as system and method for, and the title should allow the, the reader to readily ascertain what your invention is. The specification is another part of the application. Um, it is a written description of the invention. So the specification uh, details how to make and use the invention, and you should have clear, concise, um, and exact terms to allow any person skilled within the technology of the invention to make and use that invention. The specification um, normally has at least one specific embodiment, and the spe specification concludes with at least one claim, and that, and that claim or claim set must begin on a new page. Now, if we remember back to high school and college, when we did our papers and term papers and 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 all we we had to file i mean we had to follow a certain format the the page size the the the, the margins the the typeset the font the size and all of that um single or or double space um all the all the things that we had to to adhere to same thing with the with the specification or the entire application of for for a patent application so in this case, um, the specification, including the abstracts and claims, must have lines that are one and a half or double space in a single column of text. The specification is only written on, on one side, so it's not like a book format. And the pages are your regular eight and a half by 11 uh, with all margins of at least three quarters of an inch, except for the left margin, which must be at least one inch. The application pages must be numbered consecutively and must have a non-script font, uh, such as Arial, Times New Roman, or Courier, pr preferably with a font size of 12. My favorite is 12 point Times New Roman. I've been using that forever. <laughs> Specification sections. Um, the title of the invention, we just talked about that. The most common applicable sections include the background, the brief summary of inventions, a brief description of the drawings, and the detailed description of the invention, and the claims, and as well as the abstract. The lesser used sections include cross-reference to related applications, statements regarding federally sponsored research, names of parties in a joint research agreement, incorporation by reference of material sub submitted via compact disk or text file, statements regarding prior disclosure by the invention or joint adventure, and also sequence listing. So the background of the invention, that, that includes the field of the invention. And what that does is it describes at a high level the areas pertinent to your invention. The background of the invention can also describe related art. Describe what has been known, uh, describe what you know has been done, done before. The problems that led you to come up with your invention and also describe the prior art that you already know about. The brief summary of the invention, you would uh, you would also describe at a high. You would also describe your invention at a higher level. Describe the problems um, used to solve your. Use describe the problems that your invention solves. Describe what makes your invention special and different, and also describe what your invention does. The brief description of the drawings. So, if drawings, um, including figures and diagrams, are a part of the application fig papers. This section needs to be provided before the application is considered complete and released from initial processing. This, this section includes a brief, and I mentioned brief, statement of what each figure depicts. 
such as a front row of the invention, an expanded view of the of the elements from uh, to a prior prior to assembly. Um, I want to mention that one time, this was just recently, um, I had to object to the specification because the brief description of the of the drawings was not brief. It was like in a paragraph form. Uh, each drawing figure, figure one, figure one A, and it was like a paragraph. I was like, no, this is not a brief description of the drawings. So be careful with that or have your attorney be careful with that. The drawings are part of the dis are, are part of the discussion of the invention and are required if necessary to understand the the invention. Um, one hundred percent, I could I could easily say of the patent applications that 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 I look at have drawings because you know we have to know what we're looking at. You know, if, if I'm looking at a transmission case, a robot arm case and stuff, I have to see where these where these parts meet, how they are. Um, how they are put together relative to one another as they are described uh, within the, the body of the invention, um, body of the application, and especially the claims. The drawings must also show, also show every feature of the claim of the invention claimed, and it must show as many views as necessary to show the invention. Now, this 37 CFR 184 describes two two acceptable standards for drawings. One is black and white, and color drawings are normally permitted in design applications, not utility applications. Drawing requirements, again, black and white drawings, lines, and numbers heavy enough to permit adequate reproduction. Use reference characters. Um, those are numbers. Um, in, the, in the specifications and drawings, numbers are preferred. Each figure must be labeled. For example, figure one, figure two, figure three A, three B, three C. Um, avoid using descriptive words in in the figures. That's what the specification is for. The abstract. The abstract starts on a separate sheet of paper with the heading. Guess what? Abstract. The abstract must be 150 words or less. Again, one and a half or double space. It is a narrative form, which means that it does not have the the the, the legal lease um, of the of the of the claims, and is in a single single paragraph. It points out what is new in the technology and is not a repeat of the claims or the brief summary. And it's written so that the it's written to enable the public, including us examiners, to quickly determine the nature of the technical um, disclosures of the invention. The manual of Patent examining procedures, the MPEP um, paragraph is at the bottom for more information. The detailed description of the invention. This is a very important part of the application. So this is where, um, where, where the inventor would explain the invention and the process of making and using it in clear, in full, clear, concise, and exact terms. You're going to see that those four words over and over in this part in this presentation. You will want to focus on explaining the structures, the processes, or compositions of the invention. You would refer to the figures, if, if applicable, and explain the different parts by use of reference numbers shown in the figures. Again, the MPEP paragraph at the bottom, you can search that for more information. Continuing, the detailed description should provide clear support or antecedent basis for all terms used in the claims so that the meaning of the claims in the so that the meaning of the claim terms in the claims may be ascertainable by reference to the to the to the to the description now in 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 basic terms wives and mothers when you're talking to your to your to your husband your spouse and your and your children, you want to tell them each and everything that they're supposed to do. You know, you would you would want to describe to them perfectly everything that 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 they're supposed to do for their chores. Or if you're going to send them out to the store, they're going to clean their room, clean the garage. Because if not, because if not, they're going to say you didn't tell me that. That's one thing that you didn't tell me to do. No, nope. the, the the mother, the wife told you what to do. You just didn't listen. So antecedent basis means means that it was mentioned before, okay, and then and then when it comes up again, you would you, you you would have something to reference back to, all right. So it can be helpful to to draft your claims first. 
And by doing so, you can you can decide on the terminology to use and make sure that the terminology is consistent throughout the specification. You can also figure out which terms need to be defined or explained in more detail to the spec, or what we call the specification spec, specification. The claims can be a checklist to make sure that the detailed description provides clear support for the claims, that antecedent basis. I told you so. Describe the invention clearly to allow uh, specification dues. Let me go over the, the, the title, the topic here. Specification dues. Describe the invention clearly to allow any person skilled in the art uh, to make and use the invention without undue experimentation. When referencing the drawing, be sure that each reference numeral is used for only one part depicted in the drawings and that each reference numeral shown in the drawing is mentioned in the specification. Okay, there's many times that, that I have had to um, object to either the specification or the drawings for failing to do either, sometimes both. So so you want to proofread and, and, and cross-reference both your drawings and your specifications to make sure that the reference numerals are in the drawings, that are in the drawings, or in the spec, and vice versa. You want to uh, provide at least one specific embodiment, uh, including the best one known to you at the time of filing. Make sure there is a brief description of drawing sections that includes each figure referenced by its full label. For example, figures figures label 1A, 1B, and 1C should be separately mentioned versus collectively referred to as figure 1 in the brief description. Brief description. You want to provide proper antecedent basis for all the terms in the claims and also focus on the technical features of the invention. Now, where there's a do, there's a don't, or we call them cautions. You should not use trademarks in the title or to describe structure. For example, did you know that Velcro is a is a trademark term, is a is a, is a trademark name? So so you may not be able to use no, you will will not be able to use Velcro within the claims, but you can use the term hook and loop fastener. Or you, you should not use a mark, a logo, or a brand that you intend to register for a commercialized product or anybody else's um, logo or brand. The background of the invention section does not need to state how the inventor conceived the invention. For example, I came up with this idea while jogging or in the shower or while having dinner with friends. You want to avoid making claims of possible future success. This invention will sell and make millions. This will revolutionize the field. I will get a deal on Shark Tank because of this. Don't do that. Do not in include a detailed discussion of the figures or refer to the reference characters in the brief description of the drawing section. I just I spoke about that earlier. Keep it brief, one sentence. Do not forget to proofread your specification to look for grammatical errors. Okay, so to to the claims. The claims is the is the heart and soul of the patent application, and therefore the the, the patent. Without the claims, there wouldn't be there wouldn't be, be be a need. So if it's in the claim, as as said before, it must be in the specification, and that's what we talk about antecedent basis. So the claims define the invention and what aspects are legally enforceable. It must conform to the invention as set forth in the remainder of the specification. The terms and phrases used in the claims must find clear support or antecedent basis um, in the description so that the meanings of the terms in the claims are clearly understood by reference to the, to the description. Because some, sometimes examiners or sometimes the, the, the people in the general public, they will go go straight to the claims and they'll they'll see see a term. But they're like, OK, so, so what did this claim mean? And then they'll go back into the specification, try to try to find that claim. And if they don't see it, it it causes a, a, a problem. What do they mean by this term? So you would want to uh, describe everything that is in your claims. The forms of the claims, just like the first specification, you have forms of that too. Um, starts with claim listing, one and a half a double space. Each claim is a single sentence, meaning it begins with a capital letter and ends with a period. You can have three claims or three independent claims, sorry, and 20 claims total 
before excess fees are due. And claims are numbered consecutively in ascending order, like 1 through 10, 1 through 20, with original numbering preserved throughout the throughout prosecution. U.S. patent law requirements. A non-provisional application must have at least one claim particularly pointing out and distinctly defining the invention. The claim may be written in independent or dependent form. A dependent claim refers to a previously uh, to a claim previously set forth and then further limits that claim the invention. The claim in dependent form incorporates by reference all the limitations of the claim to which it to which it refers. If you have any questions on that, put it in the in the comment section, please. I forgot to mention up front. If you have any questions, please put it in the uh, comment section, and we'll get to it at the at the end. So, how how should an invention be 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 described by the claims? So, a lot of times, a lot of times in and inventors want their claims to be general. They want it to be broad, okay? But a a broad general claim is may not will not be be patentable because it can be it can uh you know theoretically infringe on somebody else's in, in invention and also be be rejected by other prior art. But if if me if I the 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 examiner say you know you would want to add this that that and the other they may they may say no that's too specific I don't I don't want to go that that specific, um, and th then it's it's not valuable so there's a sweet spot in you know in in the middle in the middle between being too specific and too too general and and too broad, so here's here's an example okay so we have a a picture here let's call it figure one. And the claim says a vehicle comprising a frame, a first and second front wheel, a front first and second rear wheel aligned and spaced behind the first and second front wheel, a seat connected to the frame, a removable top portion made of cloth, wherein each wheel rotates and is connected to the frame. Okay, that that sounds good. Okay, however. This kind of Stoga wagon also reads on that claim. It is also a vehicle comprising a frame, front wheels, rear wheels, a seat, a, a removable top portion made of cloth, wherein each wheel ro rotates. Okay, so so I, the examiner, write the um, would write the rejection saying here's a kind of Stoga wagon which has the same features of your claim. So the inventor or the attorney says says, okay, here's my amended claim. So we're going to say the vehicle comprising a motor, a yellow frame with a plurality of hinged doors, a plurality of glass windows, two red lights, two metal bumpers, wherein each wheel is made of rubber. Okay, so that so that claim now um now supersedes the 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 Conestoga wagon, but you may you you may have made it overly overly specific. Um, the yellow frame that doesn't matter because there are red frames and I mean what well, the body. Let's call it the body. It's not the frame. It's the body. Um, you know you can have other 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 things and that's called a design choice. The color doesn't matter. Um, wheels made of made of rubber. Okay, that's fine. But you can have other things as as well. So. In, in this case, it's overly, overly specific, um, and 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 it's still not a valuable claim. So before drafting the claims, you would want to write your prior to writing the claim. Answer these questions: What is the invention? What are the pieces and parts that make up that invention? How do the pieces and parts relate to one another? Does it does the does the screw go go through the nut? Yeah, it does. Um, do you have more than one in more than one invention? Is it a tangible invention, such as an apparatus, a machine, or composition, or is it a method, a method of making or a method of using? And are there are there ver multiple versions of each invention? So if that's the case, you may have multiple applications to write. Think thinking strategically. 
So what is it that you're hoping to, to accomplish in, in file, before filing the application? You would want to obtain the broadest valid claim possible. You want to obtain claims with a, with a variety of claim scope and not just of the, at the time of filing. Now, these are things that you want to think of, not just at the time of, time of filing, but throughout prosecution. And are there some, some claims uh, that you file likely to be patentable without, without amendment? Further thinking strategically, how much can you afford to spend on claims? As I said, um, independent in excess of, of three independent claims would be $115 per claim. Um, the total claims in excess of 20 or $25 per, per claim, but not just at the time of filing, but throughout prosecution. Um, for, for me, most times I get less than less than 20 claims or less than 20 total claims. Some some areas have up to 100 claims sometimes. That would be like the pharmaceutical claim, pharmaceutical groups, some some other areas. Now, note that all of the above costs are for micro entity. Um, are for, are for micro entity applicants and the USPTO website goes over the, the costs um, for, for the different types of entities. Claim drafting. A claim in a utility application or, or patent has three main parts. That is the preamble, the transition phrase such as uh, comprising, which is an open phrase, consisting of, which is a closed frame, a closed phrase, and the body reciting the elements of the invention. The transitional phrases of in within the patent claims comprise comprises versus consisting of consisting of I'm sorry comprising or which comprising is the most commonly used. It is open ended and wherein the claim encompasses all of the listed listed elements and and many more. Now, if you think back to that to that vehicle. Um, that vehicle claim, the, the the vehicle has a lot more than 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 what was claimed in there. It'll have the, the frame, the body, the wheels, the steering wheel, the seat, but it'll also have, you know, a transmission and a radio, things like that. So that 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 vehicle claim is just for, for those things, but hey, it can have other things in it. On the other hand, consisting of is closed ended. And the claim elements are, limit, are limited to, to only those that are listed and no more. Now, you normally see that in, in like pharmaceutical and, and, and chemical claims where, wherein if you were to add some, something else, it would totally change the, uh, the, 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 the chemistry of the, of, the, of the claims. Claim drafting dues. Particularly point out, again, particularly point out and distinctly claim the subject matter regarded as the invention. Consider drafting your claims first and then your specification based on terms used in the claims. Review both to make necessary additions and corrections so that the claim terms find support in the specification. Look at the claims and patents issued in your field of technology. I, I, I do recommend that. Ensure that each current each term has proper an antecedent basis. And think about what legal protection you need for your invention and tailor your claims accordingly. Claim drafting don'ts. Do not use two do not use claims covering two statutory classes of, of invention, meaning a widget and a method for using and a method for using the widget. No, that, that can't that can't happen. Do not use terms uh, inconsistently between the between the claims and or the, and or the specification. That's the antecedent basis that that we were talking about. Um, you know, for example, visor, visor member, visor section. You know, if you wives, if you send your husband out to 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 buy a a a can of corn, and he comes back with cream corn. You're like, no, I said corn. And he says, well, I bought you corn. I do, it, what? This cream corn was wrong. So be specific in, in <laughs> be specific in, 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 in what you're claiming. Do not write multiple sentence claims. Again, each claim is one sentence. Do not refer back 
only to a portion of another claim in a dependent claim and do not replace elements in another claim with a dependent claim. Okay, so that is the end of the presentation. I'm going to leave it right here with resources. Um, there are many, many uh, valuable resources at the uh, at the USPTO um, and 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 throughout the the, the entire uh, ecosystem. Um, utility patent application guide and patent processes all the way down to trademarks, uh, the Pro Se uh, Assistance Center. Um, that 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 center has primary examiners and supervisors that are ready to 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 to, to answer your emails, answer your phone calls, uh, because you know it can be. It, it can be tough to 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 draft the application by yourself. It can be done, but they're, they're there for that. The micro entity um, information is there. The patent pro bono help is there. Law school clinic. Um, that is a a a very good um, um, resource. There are law schools throughout the the, the country that have th that that have been appointed by the USPTO to 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 aid. And to aid and assist um, um, inventors in their in their uh, application. So depending on your state, there's a, there's a link right there. You can you, you can find one in your state or maybe in a neighboring state or state close by, um, and they can help you with your patent and or trademark issues. Um, another thing that is not in this list, but if Jonathan or Dave could uh, add to it, is the uh, or the, the PTRC. That's the patent and trademark resource centers. That is a a a group of libraries that the that the USPTO state libraries uh, or college libraries that the USPTO um, has has uh, sanctioned to to give out information. I've used them myself to to um, to find to get help with 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 a trademark uh, situation. I'm, I'm a patent examiner. I know how to examine patents, but not trademarks. So I call I contacted the PTRC at Howard University, Washington D.C., and um and it was a great um it, it was a great help getting getting that uh, getting it was virtual. She helped me out, shared her screen, told told me how to do things. It was wonderful. So reach out to the PTRCs that's that's in your area, in your region, or neighboring state. Um, this this um uh, pre presentation along with the with the links will be sent to you uh, sometime later. I'm sure. Um, Jonathan, that is it, and we can go to uh, questions or comments in the um, in the chat. Sure. Fantastic presentation. Thank you, Bobby. Thank so you. Folks, uh, as Bobby has mentioned, uh, we are at the Q&A segment of the webinar. Please post your qu uh, questions in the comments section and we'll load them on the stream for Bobby to answer. Uh, sure. And to answer um, one of our audience members' questions, asking if uh, slides will be made available, um, uh, we will, we can uh, discuss with Bobby if we can uh, share these slides afterwards. But in the meantime, uh, this video, uh, this webinar will be available on demand at any time after the live broadcast ends through the same link that you access them. So um, yeah, um, and That's we will good. be uh, we will be sending out uh, uh, the links, um, the uh, relevant links in the chat uh, comment section as well as uh, in the feedback uh, survey interview uh, email that we send out after the live broadcast ends. So please uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, okay, so Bobby, before we uh, go on to the audience questions, I do have uh, a few that I would like uh, to ask you as well. Sure. So you, so you've got you went over a lot of the um, the, the the patent basics, um, requirements, uh, spe specifications, and also um, you know, uh, components of a patent. Um, so I, I so my question kind of is um for uh, for those who might still be wondering so why why are patent can you tell us why patents are important um how how, how are they useful can, do they um how why do they benefit society um and why yeah. well you know if you were to, to 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 look at the difference between the the United States and and countries that 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 don't have a um. A, a a a robust patent system. I'm thinking of a large country in mm -hmm. that straddles Europe and Asia. I won't name any names. Um, we we have a 
a ro- robust patent system which which drives drives um innovation okay so you know we are one of the the most innovative countries in 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 the, in the world and that is because of of the uh, patent system um patents are also in importance because i read recently um something in internal but it is it it is public um that companies that that have patents and stuff they 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 generate so much of uh, of our economy so you know they though those companies are are up and thriving and and, and everything they have employees and and you know and all that kind of stuff so um yeah so that's why that that's why patents are um important and uh, useful and um lastly it's a you know it's a great hope so you know somebody that 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 has has an idea they can they they can state their claim and say hey look i I have this 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 patent this this piece of paper, uh, which is my intellectual property. Nobody can 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 infringe on it in theory, um, and I want to um, you know state my claim and, and my riches. Now it's not I'm, I'm not saying definitely not saying everybody who gets a patent will get rich in their thing, but there's always that hope. There's always that that possibility. Yeah, definitely, and I, I would, uh, I would, ima- I would venture to say that uh, if you don't patent a specific invention and someone else does, I mean, um, it, it's, I would assume that it's probably free game for anyone to kind of like try and utilize that if it hasn't been patented by a specific uh, person. So yeah, I mean, if if you don't do it, then someone else might for a great idea and they might get the money. So um, yeah. so yeah, definitely a great point. I also like uh what what you mentioned about uh kind of like stimulating the comedy economy excuse me Mm -hmm. Uh, i would i would i would imagine um competitors probably uh looking at uh sort of uh, an invention trying to find a workaround or like kind of something to and add to that as well to find alternate solutions for a specific uh around a specific patent or invention as well and that I, i would imagine that would probably uh Kind of like improve innovation, uh, oh, yeah. like the economy yeah. as well. So yeah, definitely, definitely some great points. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, because you know, some of the uh, patents um, are. I mean, just, just, just think of, of the, 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 the one patent that the individual or the or the company has that can that can do X. But they's like, okay, we can add this to it, and that 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 would be an improvement on that on that previous patent. So you know, within within reason um you know it does give us give us new updates to our phones and mm-hmm. uh you know new tvs you know just to, just to think about that so uh you know just think about you know where where we would be without the patent system you know what kind of tvs will, will we be looking at? will be we even be watching tv we'll be listening to baseball on the on the on the radio still probably so yeah right for sure um so my next uh this next question or my next question so what does it mean to license a patent i've heard it before is is it different from um selling your patent or i guess uh transferring a patent yeah it is it is uh, similar to 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 transferring a um a uh, a, a a patent um if you think of my my favorite in, in inventor is dr Lonnie johnson he invented the super soaker um, a squirt gun, w- water gun. Okay, mm-hmm. so he came up with that um, with that invention, and he licensed his patents to. I don't I don't want to say the wrong company, but to a major toy toy company, and that and that toy company pays Mister Doctor Johnson millions of dollars based on the royalties and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, you know whatever is is um is is agreed upon, um for that for that patent and, and for that technology that he had came up with. Gotcha. So, so, um, uh, the inventor, um, he, he still had the pat owned the rights to the patent, but I, I guess, uh, what, what you're saying is what he did was he, um, license or another company licensed it, um, from, so from, that they from can, him. So, yes. yeah, from him so that they can also kind of commercialize it. And then mm-hmm. he, mm-hmm. uh, both of them reap the benefits as well. Right. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, my next, my last question, uh, is a patent valid in every country? Uh, no. Um, the, the, the patent is, is uh, a patent is, is uh, regarded as regional, meaning this is the, the United States Patent and Trademark Office, mm -hmm. uh, which further means that the patent is valid only in the United States. Okay. So if you want a patent in China, India, Canada, you know, the, the UK, you would have to file an application in those, in those regions, in those countries. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I guess uh, it, it, like you said, if you file it there, uh, then I would guess it's only valid in those countries specifically, right? Correct. Yes. Gotcha. Thank you for that insight. So uh, moving on to our audience questions. Um, let's see. I want to uh, say that uh, just real quick, I see somebody mm -hmm. um, is in suburban Maryland. Is in yeah, suburban Maryland. It's hot and humid today. I, I understand. I mean, I'm in the office in in Alexandria. You can't see how my how my window is bright, but I'm looking at the Beltway 495 right here. I too live in suburban Maryland, just off the Beltway as well. So, yes, it's hot outside. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, the uh, the our office in DC is no uh, no different probably. Um, thankfully, we're inside, not outside. Though I'm kind of dreading going outside afterwards. But uh, yeah, we we and it's nice to see someone local as well. Um, we we do have a lot of uh audience members from different parts of of the country. From what we're seeing, sure. we see some yep. from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, California, mm -hmm. uh, Illinois. Right, so right. yeah, great great to see uh, all of you tuning in. Thank you. Um, okay, so for our first audience question, uh, audience member Lee asks, when do the details of patent become public knowledge under the, uh, the, the Freedom of Information Act? Can a mm -hmm. patent remain company proprietary? Um, okay, so, so as uh, mentioned in the, in the early slides, a, a patent application is published 18 months after, after, the, uh, after the earliest file earliest effective filing date. So it 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 will be um, published unless again um, the the applicant says, you know, for, for for whatever reasons, I do not want this application to be to be published, which is fine. But once it is once it is patented, it is public. Okay. So there so so there goes um, you know you don't need a a, a, a FOIA to, to file um, for a patent, okay. If if I it says patent, um, and can a patent remain company proprietary? No, because a patent is is public. A a patent is 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 a is a quid pro quo um, um, a, a arrangement arrangement with the inventor, the applicant, and the and the general public, which says that um, for you telling the 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 public how to make and use your your invention, that which means that it has to be public. Uh, we're going to give you this this um, this patent twenty years, of, you know, from the from the date of filing. So there's no there's no uh, private patents. Fun fact: there is a secret government area. I don't know about it because it's secret, but uh, I I only know that. I'll just put it to you that way. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if it was secret, then we wouldn't know too much about it, right? So, uh, right. yeah, Lee, hope that answers your question. Uh, thank you for the insight, Bobby. This next question, um, audience member asks, can you cover the conflict of interest in my workplace? How how do you make it, how can you make it uh, independent from the workplace? Um, I don't understand how that, I, how, actually, how that goes with a, with a pattern. Yeah, actually, um, to our audience member Orion, uh, could you could you clarify your question? Uh, and we'll, we'll get back. To, oh, um, sorry. Okay, I'll, 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 one second. I'll say this. Um, I have worked at at uh, companies be, uh, before, um, where on the first day, along with filling out your four one k information and all that, you you sign a document saying, um. Any intellectual property generated from your employment here will be subject to the property of XYZ Corporation. So, you know, and you know, it's it's generally and you know they 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 do that to to 
to protect themselves because generally it is understood that if you're at work and you're doing and, and you're doing work and you're doing a work product, that work product belongs to the company, not you. Now, I've also worked at at, at places that will give you a bonus or some type of incentive if you do have a, a patent application or even if or e even if it's a, an application they'll give you some type of benefit um, and if it goes to to a to a full patent then they'll give you another benefit so um, I hope that somewhat answers your uh, question conflict of interest so so we uh, our audience member did Orion did uh, add more to the, uh, the question. So our, uh, the audience member disclosed um, details of uh, his or her patent to his workplace because he has to, but it may not have to do with the function of his or her workplace. So I had to, to close it, but... It may not have to do with the function of my workplace. So so is that, is it is it your own an invention outside the workplace or is this something for for your job because you know again if you if, if if you did this during during working hours then the company can say that it's 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 our patent you mm -hmm. you 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 spent company time doing it it belongs to us now i don't know what you know what your what your total situation is um you can send send me or the eastern regional outreach office an email and we can you know go over that uh some more okay and um he or she did uh uh say that uh, it's his or her own invention uh, okay. regarding the patent so thank okay. you for clarification sure hope, hope that hope that helps i uh, hope, hope that answers your question uh, this next question from Jim: What does patent pending mean, and how long is it good? Oh, good question, Jim. Um, patent pending means that that a patent application has been filed and is going through the um, th through the examination process. So, um, and how long is that? Is it is it good? It 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 it, it depends on on how long it, it, it takes for that application to to become a, a patent. Now, you know, you would normally see patent pending on, you know, products, right? You know, and it's stamped up there or it's molded into the into the uh, in, into the product. So, you know, there's no change in that, of course. Um, but if you go to a website that'll have, hey, this patent is pending, then they may update it to what the actual patent number is if it is granted a, a, a patent. Gotcha. Thanks for the insight, Bobby. Thanks for the question, Jim. Um, folks, I also included uh, Bobby's uh, uh, contact information in the comment section. So uh, in afterwards, uh, after this uh, webinar ends, if you have any questions regarding patents specifically, feel free to reach out to him. Mm -hmm. So Bobby, this next question. Um, do I need to prove my invention work by documenting prototype tests, or can I patent just a concept based on drawings? And I know you kind of went over uh, the drawings um, and, and process, uh, but I guess if you could provide a little bit more insight, or um, I'm going to say yes to that. Um, the the patent office used to be used to require applicants to to provide some type of working model a working prototype of that um, invention um, through a couple of patent office fires um, and all that has you know proven to, to and the lack of space um, that has proven to um, to not be feasible with the number of increasing number of, of patent applications so the patent system is now based on trust that we're going to trust that you are providing a um a a a a feasibly working um uh, uh application now one of the one of the main precepts of the of of the patent system um is 35 USC 10101 which says that the that the that the patent must be functional it 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 must work now we do have applications that do not that do not um, that are not subject to 35 USC 101, and sometimes those, those are things that that defy um, nature. Um, you know, you like 
space machines. You know, they want to say that this particular machine will will work in space when we know that certain certain propulsion methods will not work in 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 space. For for example, so if you so now all that to say this, if you have um, documentation of your prototype test, then please add it with your with your application. And I I kind of have a question uh, to, on to add, to add to that. Is there anything that you should? I, I, I normally I would think you would think uh, add if you, if you have any documentation, you should add all of it to the application. Mm -hmm. Is there any times where you shouldn't add all of those, or should? Uh, refrain from adding certain uh, documentation. Um, anything, anything that would be um, in, in, in any type of you know proprietary data, um, you know within reason. Um, you know, Coca Cola has a secret formula, but they're not mm -hmm. patenting that secret formula either. Um, that's called a a trade secret. Now you can mm -hmm. get a trade secret for that for that formula for that software. Um, you know, for, for that software uh, um, uh, uh, compilation um, and everything, you know, Google's search search engine strategy or what are, what do they call it? The algorithm mm -hmm. is is a trade secret. You don't file for it. You just don't make it public. Gotcha. Good to know. Thank you. Um, let's see. So so to our audience members again, uh, we'll we'll see if we can uh, get. A have uh, Bobby slides shared um, to the public. We'll send if if we get permission, we'll uh, send it out with uh, our feedback form. Um, but in the meantime, you can access this video with all of his slides that he's gone over um, it, um, afterwards on demand. So um, this next question, I've heard that patents can be retroactively uh, withdrawn. How does that happen and why? Good question. Um... Sometimes the 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 applicant, if they have filed in in other countries, or say China, South Korea, you know wherever, that that uh, a counterpart examiner has has found a piece of prior art, some some prior art that would read on that on the application um, on the on those claims, and it and it and it may may affect the viability of the claims that that have been been uh, patented. In, in in that case, the applicant may say, "Wait a minute, we're going to we're going to withdraw this 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 patent, and we're going to try to try it again." Um, and and also a a competitor can say, "This this this patent is is invalid for these reasons," um, and you know it'll 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 go through a, a process of of seeing whether or not that 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 patent is valid or not. And then if it's not found found to be um, uh, valid, then it can be, well, I won't say withdrawn, but um, it can be re-examined re and then, you know, possibly not found, found to be uh, valid. So, yeah. Gotcha, thank you. Christian, that hope, I uh, hope that answers your question. Uh, this next question is a, a fairly long question. There's a uh, multiple uh, components to it. So, audience member Emil asks, if there's a company which has a patent for a certain type of device, and it's expired, is there a way to find out if their device is still protected under any patents, or if, or if they haven't renewed the patent which has expired? If it now the 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 key word to that to that question is expired. So if it if the patent has expired, then there's no 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 longer any any protection for that for for that patent. Gotcha. Which you know because you know think about this. Um, pharmaceutical companies they they run up against expiring patents all the time. So 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 once that patent expires, what happens? You 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 see. You see g generic versions of that of that particular pharmaceutical drug because there's the there's that patent is no longer and uh, it's no longer enforceable. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, and the, the the last part to this question does pat does the patent holder have any obligation to answer formal requests about what patents their device uh, is covered? 
do me a favor. Could you go back to the to the previous sure. question? Because there was a there, there was a second question. Or if they have not renewed the patent, which has expired. Okay. All right. I'm uh, I'm going to answer this two 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 ways. Um, a person can 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 search to see whether or not a patent has not, has not a, an inventor or applicant has not paid their their renewal fees. Okay. Um, we're just just talking about that this this morning. Um, I and a couple of folks on the uh, team, um, and then you can you know see if that if that applicant and in, in, inventor would want to sell that that you know the rights to that patent. Okay, but again, if it if it has a, expired, then there's no 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 option to 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 do that. Mm -hmm. Now to question to, to part three. Does the patent holder hold, have any obligation to answer formal requests about by what patents their device or solutions is covered? No. No. The the patent holder does not have any obligation to answer formal re requests. I can I, I, I can ask you, you know, for your address and phone number. That doesn't mean that you would you would give it to me. Mm -hmm. Um and also the what your device and 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 solutions covered should should be covered within the within the specification gotcha thank you emil hope that answered your uh questions uh thanks for sending those in so bobby i kind of uh, uh going off of those questions uh, or reg reg the uh, topic of uh, renewal and expiration mm -hmm. is there a recommended time uh before a patent expires that you would recommend uh, starting that renewal process. Well, there there, there are time time frames um, that that the that the patent can be or has to be um, renewed. I don't mm -hmm. I, I don't know that by by heart. Um, I think it's after five years and then so many years after that. But that's on the USPTO website. There's a there's a search um, search bar in the upper right hand corner. You could um, go to that and search renewal. Gotcha. And folks, uh, I'll, I'll be uh, searching for that link and add it to the uh, the chat uh, to the comment section shortly. Great. Thank uh, you. So we do have a few more questions left. Um, let's see. Sorry, one moment. Um, this question from Charles: What method methods do you recommend for creating drawings for patent applications? Oh man. Um now I have seen um good question. Um I have seen in in inventors hand draw their their, their own um drawings. Um some of them not pretty at all, some of them real nice. Um that is viable. Um, you know, it 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 and they do um um favor the you know the the uh, rules and, and and regulations um regarding drawings and everything um but a a lot of times companies or you know applic applicants will will hire a um a patent drafting company um and there's 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 many of those out there and and and, and sometimes the the applicant will will in the in the in, in the first round hand draw the, the the drawings themselves and then during prosecutions you know sub submit their drawings to a uh to to a to a patent drafts person to 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 do it now mo now the if you if you're going through through an uh through an attorney the the attorney may um may recommend a a uh, patent drawing firm for you Awesome, thank you, and thanks for the question, Charles. Uh, can can we go up to um, the question that was at two thirty eight? That was that was that was after after email. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, we did skip over a question. Apologies. Uh, so Liam asks, asked, do I understand that we are now a first to disclose, not a first to invent company? Country, yes. Um, Country, excuse me. Yes, it's it's called a called it first to first to file um and that made us um that that that, that made the, the the united states similar to to other countries uh to to other major um patent 
system countries um, where, they, where they were also first to, first to file. Um, meaning that it is, it is no longer um, um, applicable, and this has been this way since 20, 2012, I believe, um, that the person who comes up with the idea first, you know, and, you know, anybody can say, hey, I thought of that. Here's a here's a um, here's here's a drawing that I that, that I made 20 years ago. OK, so having that having that first to file system means that, you know, as long as it's as you're the first person uh, to file that that um, that that application then you would be on record as the first person uh, for that for that for that invention and again which is why a uh, a a a provisional application is is important because it gives you a a, a year to um to 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 file your your non non provisional application and you know within that year you can find investors you can gather money you can um you can you can per perfect your patent application you can find a patent attorney and a and a and a, and a patent drawing company you know th things like that to to make sure that your that your non-provisional application um is is uh is is, is viable and uh true true to form yeah definitely uh makes sense it sounds the most fair i mean not everyone has the money to uh Make make an invention um, first, so uh, definitely seems like filing first to file uh, is the most fair way. Thanks for the question, Liam. Uh, apologies for uh, skipping over that. Um, a question from Kit. Just curious, did President Abraham Lincoln's patent model actually work? I do not know, but that's a good question. I will ask. Um, the, the the patent office hired its first um, historian mm. a couple of years ago, and I will ask him. His name is Adam Bisno. If you if you want to, you can probably search for Adam Bisno on the USPTO website. Uh, Adam B I S N O Bisno. Um, and I will I will, I will write this this question down too. President Lincoln's patent model. And the folks, I'm just uh, adding it to. Actually, I got his um, his LinkedIn instead. Actually, okay. But, uh, sure. uh, we'll we'll add we'll add that information. So if you'd like to reach out to him, connect. Uh, fun, uh, nice to learn a little bit of history about um, the whole process and how it how it started. I mean, oh, you know what? I didn't mean to do that. Let me. Uh, but no, no, you, you, you it's, it's it's fine. It's fine. I'm okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do? What I'm doing now? I'm going to look for his email address. Um, mm. I typed in Bison. Um, but it is biz though, because I believe that it would be Adam dot bizno at uspto dot gov. Yes, Adam dot bizno at uspto dot gov. B i s n o. And uh, Kit, you can um, send him an email and ask that question. Thank you for that. Uh, last two questions. First question, uh, Bo asks, my company wants a patent idea. We will also make parts off the idea and sell the parts to Austria. Should my company patent it in both the US or Austria or in either or? or that's a, that's a good, that's a good, comp good question. I'm seeing company countries and company in my, in, in my mind. Good question. Um, definitely in the, in the United States. Um, and there were, you know, there was parts of the, of the presentation that, that, that talked about your, your strategy. Um, you would have to see whether or not it's feasible to, to, you know, pending finances and all that kind of stuff. Um, if it is, if it is feasible to, to file an application, uh, to get a patent in, in, in Austria. Now, uh, this is not legal, um, uh, advice. I'm going to cover my butt here and say that um, sometimes some some companies will file an application and and hopefully receive a patent where they are having it, 
wh where they are having it made and where they are selling it. So um, I'll, 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 I'll give you that. Um, and and since Austria is 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 in the is in the um, I want to say UK, it's in the EU. Okay, you may want to look at surrounding countries. I don't know. So again, that's not legal advice. I'm just giving you something to uh, consider. Yeah, definitely. Prob probably would recommend looking into uh, the other countries' uh, patent uh, application process. Um, yeah. Since since they're all different, but I uh, hope and, that answers your question. And the the uh, the 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 USPTO does have a um um a branch that could that that could help um that can help US in, inventors answer questions about filing overseas. So that can that can, that can help as well. Awesome! Thanks for that invite. Uh, insight, excuse me. My my words are getting <laughs> jumbled up today as well, <laughs> uh, middle of the week. Um, yeah, I'm day. yeah, definitely. So, Bobby, this last question, and you did go over uh, it a little bit uh, earlier. So, um, how long does it take the process to get a patent or at least patent pending? You could just uh, clarify yeah, again. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so as as soon as 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 you file the application, it is patent pending. Okay. So there's no, you know, you don't have to to uh to 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 worry about that once it's filed once it's filed it could take up to eight the average is about 18 months okay um certain certain te technologies could be could be less certain technologies could be could 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 be longer um depending on how many applications are coming through for those particular uh, um uh, technologies Gotcha. Thank you so much. So, folks, uh, well, actually, let's see. Uh, so, folks, yeah, um, unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, I know we could probably go on about this. We've also provided, uh, <laughs> definitely, um, just key, uh, just note uh, that we do have many more of these uh, webinars uh, in our USPTO series coming up. Uh, we'll be sharing those uh, upcoming links as well, so be on the lookout for that. Bobby, we really appreciate having you with us today and would like to thank you for providing your insight into patents and patent application process. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, could you uh, please also add the uh, Eastern Regional outreach office email um again uh folks if you have any any questions um in general you can you can email me my email is in the chat but you can also email the uh eastern region outreach office and um you know get get, get your questions answered um as well and you know we can forward your question to the to the proper channels or give you um you know relevant and pertinent information thank you th thank you all from from all over um for uh for, for being here and i hope that i gave you some some great insight and i answered your questions um um you know fully yeah definitely and uh again thank you thank you to our audience for tuning in and for your great questions um at the at, uh, excuse me as mentioned in the beginning of the webinar we will be sending a short survey to all registrants after this event would love your feedback uh, regarding this webinar please like and subscribe to our channels and check back daily on our social media for future live stream updates have a great uh, afternoon, everyone.